hi um, so this is the third video in module 4 angle tracking so in the last video we had uh, discussed on what are the various types of tracking radar systems now this is angle tracking angle tracking is uh, it's the logic with which tracking is done most of the discussion in this module will be based on this angle tracking so let us see what is angle tracking and what uh, is the logic followed in various types of tracking methods okay um, uh, in in uh, so assume a pencil beam radar pencil beam in the sense an arrow beam with a radar uh, a radar which is radiating uh, with a beam which is very narrow so it's a pencil beam radar uh, in such a radar the detection of target provides its location right location in the sense it provides the information about two angle coordinates that is azimuth and elevation now imagine this target is somewhere within the antenna beam width okay that means uh, yeah, it might not be exactly aligned but then it is somewhere in between now uh, what we need is to determine the direction of antenna and uh, we need the alignment of the beam to be moved in the direction of the antenna so that the target is within the beam, correct? Now, so uh, we are talking about single uh, angular coordinate, okay? So first we will focus on single angular coordinate, that means either azimuth or elevation and then we will come to two angular coordinates, okay? So consider, so we are, uh, consider a single angular coordinate and consider we have two beams simultaneously but pointing in two different directions that is we have two different beam positions so assume uh, two different beams like this which are pointing in two different directions so assume two such a, such uh, beams that is a beam a and beam b okay um, and these two beams are said to be squinted uh, if you don't know what is meant by squint, squint is like suppose you have an eye squint, it is like two eyeballs pointing to two different directions. Okay, so squinting, so that is squinted. Okay, so imagine, assume that these two beams are squinted, right? So with a squint angle theta q, okay, theta q plus or minus theta q relative to the bore side direction. Now, what is bore side direction? So this is see, this is bore side direction, theta naught is the angle corresponding to it and theta t is the angle corresponding to the actual direct target direction now this difference between them is going to be theta q that is the squint angle okay now the two beams are said to be squinted with a squint angle of plus or minus theta q so uh, these are two simultaneous beams uh, it can be either simultaneous beams or it can be two beams which are rapidly switching uh, between uh, two angular positions one two okay so in, time, uh, in a time shared basis. So any of these two scenarios is possible. Now the crossover between these two beams will determine the bore side direction, right? So you can see the beam A and the beam B, wherever they cross this point, this point gives you the direction of bore side. So remember this name bore side, this is the line which has to be aligned with target direction when you have two different beams like this, okay, not one beam. In one beam, you don't have this, right? One beam, this maximum itself is the point which has to be aligned with target direction. So since you have two beams, simultaneous or rapidly switching beams, the crossover between them is said to be bore side, which has to be aligned with the target direction, okay? Now the tracking radar has to position the two, two beams so that the bore side is always maintained in the direction of target, okay? That is angle theta should be equal to angle theta t. So theta naught is the uh, bore side angle, right? So angle theta should be in the direction of target angle. Target angle is theta. So theta naught should be equal to theta t. That is what uh, is desired. Okay. So in this example, the relative amplitudes A A and A B of the echo signal. So this is A B. So the beam A has an amplitude A A at the target direction. Beam B has an amplitude A B at the uh, at this target direction theta. Okay, so if the difference between them, that is if AA is greater than AB, right, here you can see. 
if a a is greater than a b it means the target is on the right side okay so yeah so these are the amplitudes which are measured in two different positions so they de de uh, determine how far the target is uh, from both sides and in what direction the two beams have to be repositioned in order to maintain the target on the both side like this so in this if you see a a is equal to a b correct so this is what we have to do okay so if it was the other way that is a a is greater than a b then it would have been on this side so you have to move in this direction that is the left side okay so this is how we determine so this amplitude information is important now so this is all about angle tracking and this whatever we are speaking here is single angular coordinate okay so we have we have assumed just one see only theta did phi come into picture here no so this is only one single angular coordinate so in practical sense scenarios we need two angular coordinates to get the exact uh, location of the target so it should be both elevation and azimuth so two additional so this for one angular coordinate you have used two beams right so for two angle coordinates we will need two additional beam positions which the next two beams should be in the orthogonal plane correct because we know theta and phi are in orthogonal planes right so in order to get two angle coordinate location of the target we need two additional beam positions in the orthogonal plane to obtain angle tracking in the other plane right the orthogonal angle coordinate so basically we need four beams to do the proper tracking and get the location right so sometimes three beam positions are also used uh, but then mostly four beams are preferred now so this is what is angle uh, tracking okay so i have put the same points here so to i'll just go through these points once more so to determine the direction in which the antenna need uh, beam needs to be moved right measurement has to be made in two different positions what is that a a and a b now the about of beams as i said is said to be squinted with a squint angle plus or minus theta q relative to both side direction both side is the theta not direction which is a crossover between two beams a and b the crossover between of two beams is door side direction the beam should be moved to point side correct so this is what is uh, desirable the door side direction should be moved to target position only then the alignment is done and then we are able to predict the uh, location of the target theta not should be equal to theta t okay so early tracking radars used single time shared beam to track in two angles so i told you, you can use either of the two scenarios one is use simultaneous beams right simultaneous means at the same time uh, send beam in two different directions other option is use one single beam in time shared basis okay so accordingly so the same logic is used uh, in both uh, all these three techniques what are the three techniques as we have seen in the previous video they were mon monopole tracking conical scan and sequential lobing now when uh, time shared when the tracking radars are using um, a single time shared beam that is a beam on a one beam on a time shared basis to track in two angles then uh, it is either conical scan uh, tracking method or sequential lobing tracking method okay so sequential lobing and conical scan employ a single beam in time shared basis but when we have uh, the modern high precision trackers use equivalent of four simultaneous beams as we were speaking earlier so to perform two dimensional tracking so when we use simultaneous uh, beams uh, the tracking method is called as monopulse tracking okay so that's the main difference between sequential lobing conical scan and monopulse track so that was about angle tracking angle tracking is not a method it is a logic which is applied in all these tracking uh, methods okay so this is the basic with which the entire module will run fine so that was about angle tracking so when this problem is when this question is asked you have to draw this figure it's the same thing okay you have to draw this figure and you have to explain the various scenarios so whatever we dealt today in this module fine so all these are there in the textbook shkolnik shkolnik is our uh, textbook 
okay so that's the single textbook which is enough for this subject that is uh, the whole subject fine so you know, for this i have not made notes because the textbook is much more much better enough because the uh, contents are not like very vast you can just read the textbook and ppt will suffice okay fine thank you then so monopole tracking would be our next topic which i'll be handling in the next video and the online class thank you then